Hey, yo, what's up, Rico? Welcome to uh, Hustle's podcast, man. DJ Hustle's podcast. Rico, what's up, baby? What's going on with you, Hustle? What's going down? Man, bro, working, staying out, out of the way. And I see you working all the time, man. My, my, I've seen you for years in the game, bro. I see you forever. And to me, you, you, I see you at two different kinds of positions. You're a producer, you're a singer, and you're a content creator. So give me a little backdrop on your story, man, of how you, how you began. Well, yeah, as you already know, my name is Rico310. I'm a singer, rapper, songwriter, producer, and recording engineer. Recording engineer. I started filming and it just added on to it. But the real truth is I started off as a baby singer in church with my parents. <laughs> That's how I started off. To be honest with you, it was me, my sister, me, my brother, and a couple of my cousins. We were called the Sunshine Band. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. I should have said band. that. I should have said that. <laughs> I should not say that. Yeah, well, hey, get down and die. <laughs> yeah, we used to sing church songs and go to different other churches and perform church songs in Watts, Compton, LA, mm -hmm. um, Long, uh, Long Beach, okay. just different churches my family uh, would go to and they performed at them. That's and I dope. was the youngest singer out of everyone. That that's that's dope, bro. Um, so as you gradually, you know in the church and you, as you became a young man and a, a, onto an adult, when did you start recording yourself or getting recorded? Um, it was uh, 1992. Uh, I don't know if you remember the group All For One. Yeah. Well, my brother and my sister, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had been in the studio doing background vocals and different stuff with them wow. working with Tim O'Brien and Blitz Records. Wow. And um, just one time, my mom, she used to have a van with TVs and video games in it. Yep. And she drove me to the studio and they were in there rapping and doing all stuff. And I was had, I had to be in the van. Wow. While they were all in the studio, I'm outside in the van playing video games. And, yeah. and one day I went in and used the bathroom and, you know, my brother and my sister then was like writing songs with them. And I just was like amazed at it. And I just started singing in front of the producer and he was just like, like y'all never told me about him. <laughs> Get him in here. You know what and, I'm saying? And that that first night was the first time I ever recorded. Wow. That he was like, I want to put him on a song. Wow, you caught the bug right then and there. And, I mean, right then and there. And the first song, well, I did two songs. I did a song called Messing It Up. Mm -hmm. And then I recorded on the song She's Got Skills yeah. by All for One. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually the rapper that's on that song. Wow. Yeah. And uh, that's how that's how I got into music. My family was already in the music, mm -hmm. but I watched them for so long do music. It just started rubbing into me. And then, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And believe it or not, I'm the only one still going. I don't know why. <laughs> I see why you I, I see why that you are still going, because I see you doing your production. I've I've even played some of your songs when I'm DJing sometimes. So it just depends on where I'm at and the venue that I'm in. To, I can do so when I have, when I have the choice to do so. Um, were you rapping first or were you were you singing first? You were singing first, right? Um, I was singing as a little kid, but my cousin Chris, R.I.P., he was a rapper okay. and he was rapping, and I would just like singing background stuff when he rapping. But when I got in the studio with All for One, I was a rapper. I wasn't, a, you know, I at that time in my life I wanted to be a rapper, right. even though I could sing. So I was pursuing rapping, okay. but you know, as time went on, I just started seeing people adapt more to, to love songs and R&B. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just stick with singing. Even though I rap on my music sometimes, right. mm -hmm. I had to stick with the singing. That's what's up. I, li I like that, man. Um, so you you produce so many good artists to this day. I mean, you, you keep going. Who are some of the people that you work with in the studio so far? I work with True. I work with TC Forty Eight Hundred. I work with uh, Hot Dollar. I work with Mac Lucci. Mm -hmm. um, some well, some underground artists, okay. but they were known. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Artists to a lot of other people, but to me they were like basically like underground artists. Mm -hmm. But the main ones that I named were main artists that I actually worked and produced music for them. Gotcha. Or wrote a hook for them on one of their songs. Now, so you you write the hooks, you rapping, you you doing the production, you and then you get into filming stuff. 
Now, what got you into doing that production wise, as far as going out to concerts and filming everything? Sugar tea. Wow. Sugar tea. Um, she gave me my first door opening. Um, her and Latanya Allen. You know, so let me say that just to, you know, keep the 1000. But um, Sugar T, you know, introduced me to a lot of different promoters. Got you. And through that, you know, I got to meet Latanya Allen and she took me around some of her people's. And from there, just the chemistry of me as a person, you know, yeah. people just was like, hey, I want you to come and do this event. Come and do this event. And that's how it happened. Man. Um. And it was a door open. It was a door yeah. opener, man. It opened so many doors and it got my name even more in the industry than I ever could imagine. Yeah, video work will do that to you if you do it right. Video. <laughs> it's, it's work, you know what I mean? You put, holding the camera and you making sure you talk to people in the right context and you putting it out there and you editing it right. It, it can really open doors for you. And, I'm, and I've seen it, you know. Um, I've seen you everywhere I pop up at. I'm like, whoa, he's over here too. We go, what's up, baby? He's like, hey, what's up, hustle? I gotta go. Peace out, you know. And man, so I watched you and you and Keisha Cali for a long time, grinding. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, I said to myself, one day I'm gonna make it to a show. Yeah. I'm gonna be able to interview someone. Yeah. And I just kept going with it. And she just told me to film her video. She was like, film my video for me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool, I'll do it. I got, you know, a few cameras. So I'll, I'll shoot it because it was basically just for me, content for me. But mm -hmm. when she was like, hey, come on stage with me and film me on stage, it took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. That's like, right. like, man, I couldn't even imagine as far as I, I'm not doing shows right now because of that coronavirus, but I thank God for the position that they put me in. Mm -hmm. That's dope. I mean, you have been entrepreneur you're you're a true hustler you know how to work you know how to do things the right way let's let's talk about the back end of recording and, and the business side of it because a lot of artists don't understand that when you record music you have to license it and you have to make sure it has split sheets so what have <laughs> other artists do when it comes to producing their music and putting and putting it out I tell every artist the same thing. I tell them about ASCAP. I tell them about BMI. I tell them about split sheets. You know, the business comes first. It's 90% business, 10% music. Not 90% music, 10% business. Because everybody go that route thinking I got to make a thousand songs mm. when it's actually you need 90% of your business mind. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter what type of song you have if you got the business ethnic to talk to someone, you can get a song played, pushed, or, you know, somebody can believe in you based on, you know what I'm saying, who you are and how serious you are about the music. That's right. So I tell every artist, man, know the business. Before you jump in the studio recording on somebody's album, know the business because you're going to go in there and give those audios away for free. And yeah. you're not going to get paid. And if they publish them before you, you have no, you have no right to say it was yours because you didn't you didn't do the necessary business to get that song to make it yours okay let me let me do let's, let's break it down for the artists who just now trying to figure it out um first things first what would you tell the artist to do off the bat if they come in you know okay i'm, I'm gonna do a song with you what do you do at that beginning of the time of the session copyright your name mm. that's number one before mm. you record any record drop any hook any beat Wow. You got to own that name because you will go out here and record on a beat, make a name for yourself and somebody else go and sign up your name. Now you got to buy that name back from them. They go trademark your name while you doing music. And now you got to buy that name back or change your name. Similar to how Rick Ross went to Ricky Rose. And that's a bigger loss than anything. Cause what if the people adapt to the name that you had? What if that person won a million for that name? Mm. So the first thing you do as an artist, go copyright your name and your website under that name. Like I have Rico, Rico310.com. Go mm. get your trademark and get your .com for your name. That's the two major things you need to do. Third, what's, what's number three? Third thing is a website. Okay. okay. You got to have somewhere to drive people. You got to have somewhere to drive traffic for the people. 
Gotcha. And if you just putting it on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, MySpace, you're giving away content. It's you're making them rich and not yourself. Okay. Okay. Because they get paid off content by viewers that go view the content. Now, yeah. if you had some content for them, what you can do is have a website, make five seconds, and direct them to your website so you can get the stats on your website. Yeah. I got you. That's you cool. upload all your music to your website first before you put it on anybody's website. So you can drive them to your website. So name, mm -hmm. website, which is whole website and hosting. I mean, a, a web name and then a web page. Got you. you need a page to be able to drop that music on there. Now, Other you, than Instagram and YouTube and all of that other stuff. Now, would you tell them to do like a distro kid deal or uh, what's, I, I can't think of the other, other the ones out there that do the music platforms. Yeah, some artists, yes, you want to have a distro kid page. Right. You know, because distro kid is like kind of like a, a music market where people go listen to music at. So you do want to still have a distro kid. Mm -hmm. You can have the most basic one. I'll tell you to go to the pro because they give you more features and more things you could do with the pro web of uh, DistroKid. If you go with just a regular basic $20, you're not getting the right audience. They only giving it to a few audience. Same thing with Instagram. If you have your Instagram business page, you're gonna attract more audience versus having just a regular Instagram page. That's right, that's right. So with you, with you being a producer, rapper, singer, now content creator, what's next for you? Reality show. Reality TV, because I know people the future is based off of content. That's what, and I've been saying it for the last 10 years. It's that's how I end up having the cameras that I have is because I knew it was going to go into video. People don't want to be, they don't want to see a flyer. They want to be told what's going on. Mm -hmm. They want you to come in and say, Hey, what's up with it? It's your boy Rico 310. I want y'all to go over to my website, 310production.com. Check us out. Listen to the new music, the new content. That's what they want to be told. And they want to be told within 30 seconds to a minute. Anything past that, they're not listening to you. Oof, that's quick. <laughs> you got to be quick because this is a thing. That's why they created reels. And, and it, you know, it got to be fast because right. the, the mind is not picking up slow anymore. It's that we're, we're rapidly living. Mm. Things are changing by the minute. Right. In, in this world, no matter where you at, Everything changed by the minute. Man, C can you see yourself like producing a movie? I mean, you already got a reality show coming. Can you see yourself doing a movie or com any commercials or? Man, my queen, B-Fly, she told me plenty of times, hey, we're doing our reality show, but have you ever thought about us doing short films? Get us a few people that we know, pay them, and have them do some skits of what we need them to do. And I said, yes, we can. So as we drop this reality show, we can start making short films, whether they're like uh, 10 minutes, 30 minute short films, yeah. where you could just, you know, basically short films that give messages because that's what a lot of people are not doing anymore. They're not giving a message. And that's what I love about 50 Cent because in his, his um, films, he give a message. Yeah. He's telling you what not to do or how not to get caught up. If you go this route, this is what you're, putting yourself into this is a consequence of what you're getting into if you go this route mm -hmm. I can so see that. yeah she's always told me that and she's always said you know i'm saying short films and that's something i do look forward into getting into because that's where the future is going films that's it that's it. why netflix want everybody content netflix <laughs> is sending out memos talking about if you're a content creator i'm trying to explain that to people and if people the artists don't understand that they can become a corporation of content yeah if they if they knew how to trust each other they can be content corporations yeah and people don't understand that i tell that to a few associates that i you know what i'm saying was around for a few years but i backed up off them because i said we all getting the income tax check yeah so why we can't why we can't put no money together each year tars you getting six to ten thousand dollars why you can't put a thousand aside for the year that's a hundred dollars each month you can invest into whatever you want to do yeah. but if it's and it was like 10 of us if it's 10 of us around here we all getting this amount why are we not investing like and so i walked away 
and said, you know what, I'm going to learn everything I can learn so I don't have to depend on someone doing it for me. Learn how to produce, learn how to engineer, learn how to write better, learn how to uh, mix, learn how to shoot videos, because these are things that I'm cutting off from having to go out and get those sources from someone else. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So what's, what's next after the reality show, man? Um, man, um, I'm thinking after after the reality show kick off and we get into short films, I need a book about me, a book about my story, because a lot of people don't know my story. Um, coming up as a kid born in Compton, raised in Compton and Watts, leaving Compton and Watts, uh, moving up north to happen to get in trouble, messing around with the law, end up losing 10 years of my life. Uh, five in YA, five in prison, you know, and to still be able to come out here and adapt and still, you know what I'm saying, rehabilitate yourself in society. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been back in 20, 27 years now. That's dope. I haven't had a car ticket. I haven't had a, uh, it's, it's been years. That's I got dope. pulled over two times by the highway patrol and they told me to go. There you go. They said, man, I don't even want to put nothing on your record. It ain't nothing on your record. I don't even want to put nothing. I'm gonna just give you a warning and send me <laughs> on my way. <laughs> That's a hell of a good good story to have, man. Start. Are you have you started writing already or no? Um, no, I didn't. Uh, I have, you know, I'm saying the memories of everything. I just haven't started putting it down on paper. Start job. But it's something that I want to tell because, you know, I want to be able to show kids that's coming up that, you know, you can make mistakes, but it's how you, you know, what I'm saying fix the mistake, how, it's how you go on from that point. It's not keep creating mistakes and more mistakes. You gotta realize, hey, I'm much older now and I have a purpose here and I'm, yeah. I'm following my purpose because like I have young guys in my family, I talk to them about what I've been through and it saves them from going down that road. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. You know, and that's, I thank God that me talking to them made them see a better light because it have no one been to prison since I've, I've been home. That's dope. Like nobody, not the young ones, not no one. So it was like, you know, I had a hard upbringing, but you know, I softened it out as I got older. Yeah. Because I was at a point in my life where it was just like, I don't care about nobody, nothing, this, this, and this. I was being ignorant. Mm. And when I learned who I, like who I really was as a person and the talents that God had given me since birth, it was like, man, focus on your talent. Like right. you, you make people feel good. Just, you know, just having regular conversation. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, you know what, focus on that. And I look at like the universe, you know, you can't be out here doing wild things and expecting the universe to bless you. No, you can't do that at all. You, you'll be you're hustling back with, with that one. And, <laughs> and that's <laughs> what I don't want to do. I'm going to tell you, I don't want to do that, man. So I believe, honestly, hustle, music saved me. That's what's up. Music saved me, and I know it saved me because when I was getting out of prison, uh, there was an officer named Mr. Hamilton, mm. old white, great head man, and he always he had all he had something to pick with me. He always, you know, what I'm saying, wanted me to, you know, um, like work and do stuff that he knew he could write me up for. Mm. You know, and he knew if I messed up, I would get days added to my time. So I focused on not being, I had to really teach myself not to be angry and I still use it to this day Good. because I know I could be an angry person, but I got to think of the consequences. But mm -hmm. one thing he told me is the whole time he, he messed with me in there, you know, he, he wrote me up. He did all type of stuff to me. But when I was getting out, he told me, he said, you're a good dude, a real good dude. You get out there and you find something that you love to do, and that's what you do, and you won't come back. Mm -hmm. And my dream is to go back to that prison. If he ain't dead because he was old then, and let him see, look at me now. Reach out to him. 27 man. years, man, I ain't been back. By listening to what you said, mm -hmm. the things you did to me, I'm talking about this dude, he tried to make other officers didn't like me. <laughs> Damn. But I believe he did it to make me hate prison. Mm. Well, it worked. It was a lesson at the same time he was trying to show me 
that this is what you're going to get every time you come back. You're going to have an officer that don't like you. It's always going to be an officer that don't like you. So if this is what you want the rest of your life, bring your black butt back. And this is what you're going to get. And guess what? 27 years has went by. And you ain't going back. I ain't went back, man. I ain't even thinking about it. I may go still to this day, Hustle. When I see the county jail uh, Great Goose, I put my head down. <laughs> <laughs> I speed up. <laughs> I don't even want to look at it, man, to be honest with you. Because it's not that, that I couldn't have, like, I couldn't hold my own because I held my own. Right. But it was just like, who want to do this the rest of their life? Nobody. Like being told what to eat, but having to try to believe in your family. They telling you on the phone, oh, I'm going to send you that $20. Don't worry, it's coming in the mail. I'm waiting months for $20. Whew. That ain't okay, good. Okay, I'm calling my homeboys, and they'd be like, you have a collect card. And you hear them come on the phone. Hello? And they'd be like, you got a collect card from an inmate at correctional facility? No, nah, click. But you supposed to be my homie. You know what I'm saying? So all of that family, it, it was a valuable lesson for me. Mm. And that's what I truly believe. And I came home. And, and like I said, when I came home, I didn't know how to make a beat. I didn't know how to touch a keyboard. I didn't know none of that. All I knew how to do is play guitar. Mm. I didn't know nothing else. That's all I knew. I just play guitar and sing. Because in prison, all I had was a, my family sent me a guitar in there. Right. That's all I knew how to do. But when I came home, I was working in the studio. Um, I don't know if you know who Kenny McLeod is. I heard but he's a black hole Kenny McLeod, man. He worked with all like the top great artists. But I had a buddy of mine paying him so I could record his studio. And mm. one night I was in the studio with him and he had some girls there. And, you know, he, he was really trying to hang out and chill. Mm. But I was trying to work. And he looked at me and shoved the keyboard at me and said, nigga, won't you make the beat? And it embarrassed the hell out of me. Really? And I was like maybe 20, 26, 25, 26. And from when he did that to me, I said the N-word, no N-word will ever be able to do this to me again. I'm going to produce my own. And I sit on that keyboard doing like this. <laughs> trying to figure out the notes mm. and I kept just touching the keys and I went home I looked at the program he was using mm -hmm. and I was like Fruity Loops okay I went home and back then they had LimeWire you can yeah. go download Pirate Bay off of Lime, get Pirate. I mean you can Pirate Bay like that or LimeWire right. I went and downloaded that program and I sit there all night trying to figure it out so what I know now wow and that same person, like two years, maybe three years ago, we was in the studio together. And he said, dude, like, I did not expect for you to be what you are today off of me doing that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you get the motivation you need. So oh, he embarrassed me in front of everybody. Yeah. I was embarrassed. And that's, I can honestly say it. Like, it was one of the times in my life where I was like, man, I don't even feel like recording tonight. Like, I don't even feel like, like, just go have your fun. Yeah. And see, my homeboy who was paying him, he was there with him trying to hang out and kick it. Right. But I had already been there at his studio like three or four days working every day. Mm. And at this point, he was tired of me. <laughs> and 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 I'm 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 glad he did that. Because I wouldn't know how to engineer or produce today. I'll be still looking for somebody to produce or engineer my idea. Ooh, you know, you know how that goes. You know, so, you know how that goes. I'll call you so, back, you know. I thank God he did that, man. And I thank God he recognized three years ago that I grind and I put in the work because he told me face to face, like, dude, you, you did that, man. And, and like, you destined to get what you want because you never gave up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Give out all your information as far as your website, your, your social media, and when the release date of your, uh, your new reality show. My website, you can check me out, is 310production.com. And that's spelled all together, T-H-R-E-E-O-N-E-O, -E -E productions, with an S, dot com. 
You can find me on Instagram at the real Rico 310. And that Rico is R-I-K-O 310 all together. And you can follow me on Instagram at 310 Production all together. Right there. If you need beats, backgrounds, hooks, production, right. editing, videos, <laughs> I do graphic design, I build websites, whatever you need, I shoot whatever you need. Believe me, if I can't do it, I either find someone to do it or I'll learn how to do it. That's what's up.